And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, of course, as always, every day from 11 o'clock UK time, we have our daily Liverpool briefing. Of course, today it is match day, and Liverpool will be hosting Sheffield United in the Premier League, um, and in today's sort of live stream, guys, we are going to be discussing that game that, of course, is coming up. We've got a uh, injury update, eight injury update players, we've got a bit on Thiago, we're, of course, going to be going through the sort of um, title race, um, of course, it was fixtures played between our rivals yesterday um, and of course going through today's main headline uh, another Ruben Amarim to Liverpool update but as always guys please do get into the uh, comment section below whether you're watching this live on a replay and today guys I want to know your score prediction for the game against Sheffield United the poll is will Liverpool beat, beat Sheffield United the options are yes no and uh, a draw so do let me know your thoughts i want to know score predictions down there in the live chat and if you are watching this on a replay hit uh, put it in the uh, in the comment section and as always, guys, hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, we did pass 600 likes yesterday. That was a like goal. So I'm going to up it a little bit more um, and go for 650. So if we can do that uh, by the end of the, the replay or by the end, um, that would be absolutely amazing. So let's try and get to 650 likes. But let's talk about the game, of course. Actually, no, let's not. Let's talk about uh, the games yesterday before we move on to our game tonight um, against Sheffield. United. Um, two seconds, let me just try and get this one right. There we go, and there we go. So as you can see, we have been bumped down to second, but of course, don't be alarmed, we are playing uh, today and of course can go back to the top of the table. Um, our title rivals, if you like, Arsenal, of course, were playing Luton Town at home and managed to win that game Um by two goals to nil, Odegaard and a own goal from Luton, um, sealed all three points for them. And then over it, uh, the Etihad, Manchester City, of course, beat Aston Villa four goals to one. Um, and potentially after the 20 minute, 20th minute, you could have maybe have seen um, something happen when Aston Villa got the equaliser. But however, that wasn't the case. Manchester City ran right, uh, getting the goal in uh, towards the end of the first or the second goal towards the uh, end of the first half. And then, of course, managing to wrap it up with a Foden hat trick. So... <laughs> Again, as I always say, um, in title races, and as we've seen so many times um, over the period of time whilst we have been in title races, um, you know, these teams are never going to be dropping points. It's always the case. It's always been the case. And you just got to expect that they're not going to drop any more points. So we need to make sure that we have our house in order and make sure that we're winning all of the games uh, that we're playing. And as stated, that's the mentality that Jurgen Klopp said in his press conference yesterday. Um, and I feel that's going to be the case. But yes, yeah, a few score predictions piling in down there in the live chat guys if you haven't already got involved please do um, score predictions to 6-0 uh, for Liverpool against Sheffield United says Elijah Ian says I know we've heard about who may be getting as a new manager but who do you think we'll get um, my answer is Ruben Amarim I think um, we will get him um, and my answer to who I want at this moment in time I, I did want in Xavi Alonso as well on that train with Xavi Alonso but now of course um, you know I've, I've let I've swallowed the pill if you like and uh, I'm well aboard um, the Ruben Amarim Amarim sort of train so yeah at this moment in time Ruben Amarim for me um, but yeah, no, that's who I'm going to go for. And we've got another update with regards to him a bit later on, so we will be discussing that. Um, Ale says 2-0 Liverpool win. Ally says 4-0 uh, Liverpool win. Joza says 4-0 Liverpool win. Everybody saying four goals. I hope you're right, guys. I hope you're right. That would be absolutely amazing. And Uncle Anfield, Uncle Rods says good morning. Good to see you all, guys. If you are just piling in, as always, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and get your score predictions for the game down there in the comment section and in the live chat below. Um, so yeah, of course, our title rivals went on to win their games yesterday and uh, as a result this is how the league table looks uh, but as I keep on saying don't be alarmed we win our game tomorrow we will go top of uh, tomorrow tonight we will go top of the table um, which is great to see as stated the league title is necessary is, is pretty much in our hands at this moment in time um, and our uh, opposition of course is against um is up against uh, Sheffield United. Wait, two seconds. Let me try and get this bit right. I'm not very good at it. 
There we go. And then we've got Sheffield United tonight. So, uh, again, a side that has been struggling at this moment in time, I'm not going to lie, with regards to um, Sheffield United. They're a team that are rock bottom at them this moment in time. Um, they're a side that are struggling for confidence. And if you are a betting man, you would put them down. You would say that they were going to get relegated. And a bit of team news ahead of the game, guys. The most important stuff, of course, if you watched Jurgen Klopp's uh, press conference, you already know all about it. But Klopp revealed, of course, with Tyro N picked up a knock and we'll have to see quote unquote about his fitness for the Sheffield United match and it is unlikely that the Japanese plays um, should there be a risk at all on a positive note though the boss said that Curtis Jones is in full training and is in contention but won't start on Thursday um, however also stated that Andy Robertson could play of course as he picked up an injury on international duty and as we reported it wasn't that serious so um, Andy Robertson could be making his return tonight of course and on Diogo Jota and Trent Alexander-Arnold, Klopp added that they'll hopefully be back from next week and are already in a part of team's training. Uh, there was also good news on Allison, who could return to first team training next week with the same going for Stefan Bishesh. So um, as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit more positive with regards to our kind of injury problems at this moment in time, um, which is uh, very, very good to see. Um, the hope is that Liverpool get the game won early so that we can take the likes of Alexis McAllister and Darwin Nunes off of Sunday's fixture against Manchester United looming. And to be honest, guys, I don't like to jinx things. Some people say I'm a bit of a jinx on this channel. Um, but what I will say is that we can't be losing to uh, Sheffield United at home if we're going to be going out for the title absolutely there's zero chance uh, we could be doing that regardless of where they find themselves at this moment in time fighting for the survival we cannot lose that game it has to be a must win game and I do fully expect us to get the job done under the lights at Anfield and if you're of course a betting man you'd probably back us to concede a goal within the first opening five minutes so here's hoping of course that um, we don't <laughs> and we can just have a more plain state sailing evening because of course we have got that game against Manchester United at the weekend. Um, Ashley says 8-0. Oh, guys are predicting a lot of goals tonight. That's fine. That's amazing to see. Uh, my my lineup prediction. I would obviously say Kelleher in goal. I would go Bradley right back. I would say Kwanzaa centre-back. I'm not too sure what's happening with Kanate. Van Dijk as a centre-back as well. Probably Gomez will play, probably start from left-back. And we might see the integration, of course, um, of Andy Robertson a bit later on. And then in the midfield, of course, I'll probably go McAllister. So Bosley, if Endo is, is ready to go, Endo will play. Um, Curtis Jones could probably come off of the bench, maybe. Um, and then potentially, if they're all out, then... Uh, who knows at this moment in time. Then the front three, I feel, will go really strong. I feel we'll go Salah, Nunes and Diaz. Um, and then as stated, I think the match plan will probably be, you know, try and get it one early and then take off some key players um, and see what happens from there. Um, in terms of the actual Sheffield United team, guys, um, it's fair to say that since, you know, Chris Wilder's come back as a reintroduction, obviously his first spell, he did very, very well with Sheffield United, um, but hasn't been the sort of turnaround that the board probably at Sheffield United would have expected. As stated, the club do currently lie at the bottom of the table, although they do have games in hand on their relegation rivals, and of all teams, they look most likely to go down at this moment in time. But what threat do they pose? As stated, we've got to take every single team um, serious. Well, the Blades have shown signs of life in the last few weeks, against Fulham on Saturday. They twice went ahead and were 3-1 up before conceding two goals in the last few minutes. So we're fairly unlucky. And then the previous game against Bournemouth, um, where they were away from home, followed a similar pattern as they twice surrendered the lead in a 2-2 draw. So they have been able, of course, to get back um, and have been able to score goals. But at, equally at the back, they've been conceding goals and not really been having the knack to, to hold on into games, which would bode well to Liverpool. Um, but yeah, we just got to try and put this stupid hoodoo that we have at this moment in time uh, with letting the first goal in um, aside um, and we should be OK. But even if we do go a goal behind, you know, Sheffield United um, have history this season of not being able to hold on to it. And of course, we do have the history this season of being able to, to go on and get all three points for sure. Um, will Gakpo play for confidence and form? I'm not too sure at this moment in time. I think Klopp's just going to be going to go for that sort of strong lineup. I would say that's my predicted lineup for those of you pulling in. Kelleher, Bradley, Kwanzaa, Van Dijk, Gomez, Michalis, Rendo, Sabozla, and then obviously Salah, Nunes, Diaz. So that would be my starting 11. Um, I don't 
expect Jurgen Klopp just by what he's been doing this season to, to rest players he's always going fully fit squad uh, but having said that I do believe that if we do win the game early on in terms of go up a few goals then he'll probably pull off key players like Sabozlai maybe McAllister maybe Darwin Nunes for the game against Manchester United and Horizon uh, there was also an update on Joel Matip by the way of course he's not going to be in contention for this game um, but of course he had that sort of season ending injury many feel that Joel was, is not going to be playing for Liverpool ever again but um, he said that is his fitness is getting better and he's actually running again um, is what Klopp said and I think since he got injured uh, this is the best moment because it was very painful in the beginning very painful him for him uh, he got through and now it's pain free but that's all it takes time I don't think the season is long enough for him so he won't be back of course but on a sort of personal level on a man level um, it's good to see him you know starting to get fit and available again which is also good to see uh, we want to go strong. I would expect us to win comfortably, says Gen LFC. Um, yeah, I think I think so. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna. To, we can't. Well, I don't think we're gonna lose this game. In, in my personal opinion, either way. Um, but I'm gonna give you a couple of crazy stats ahead of this game, actually. And this is um, actually from. Um, a site for, for digging this one out. Uh, but no uh, substitutes have ever scored for Liverpool against Sheffield United. Yeah, that is a crazy fact given the teams have played each other 136 times, though not all fixtures had substitutes allowed. Liverpool have won 26 points from losing positions in the league this season, a division high. The record number of goals conceded for a team in a 38 Premier League season is 89 by Derby County in 2007 and 8. The Blades have already let in 77 in nine months matches remaining. Of course, the referee for this one is uh, Atwell. Um, Stuart Atwell is the referee. James Main warning and Richard West as assistants and then Taylor acting as the fourth official. Um, and then, of course, for VAR, it will be Chris Kavanagh, Mark Scholes as his assistant. Uh, and this season, we've already had Stuart Atwell. He refereed um, Liverpool on the pitch, officiating our win over Fulham. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Again, ahead of that one. Um, but, yeah, as always, let me know your score predictions down there in the comment section below. What do you think of it? Do you reckon we'll get the job done easily enough? Let's move on to some other stuff. And now, of course, let's talk about this man here, Thiago. So, yes, um, Thiago, of course, um, currently injured. Uh, very, very so a uh, sad thing, of course, with with him. He was out for majority at the start of the season. Um, he came back um, for like 26 minutes and then was ended up being injured again. But there's an update with regards to him at this moment in time. Uh, and that is he is currently in Spain with his personal physiotherapist as he recovers from a hamstring injury. Um, he's also, I know you probably guys probably already knew that at this moment in time, but he's not going to be receiving a new contract. I don't think that's uh, groundbreaking news, but that's also confirmed from other sources that he's not going to be receiving a new contract to Liverpool. And as stated, it's no surprise. Um, but there's also offers um, on the table from Saudi Arabia this summer. And um, yeah, it does look as though Thiago will be playing in the SPL um, if for a Saudi team this summer. Uh, there's a few clubs obviously interested and keen and interested, um, but the most likely destination for him is Saudi Arabia. And that comes from decent sources. Um, and it's always a shame with Thiago because I think he's an absolute baller. I genuinely do. I think he's a great, great player. And for Liverpool, he's actually been a decent player for us. He's been a good player for us when he's been on the park and as a football fan in terms of watching globally and watching around Europe and stuff like that he's always a player that I've very, very much been fond of before he joined Liverpool whether that be at Bayern Munich whether that been at Barcelona He's always a player that I thought uh, was really, really good. So uh, whilst we have seen glimpses of him being a, and a, being a baller for Liverpool, um, it's a real shame that we couldn't really get his time uh, without the injury hiccups along the way. And it's yeah quite sad in that sort of regard for him. But um, yeah, it does look as though he's going to be going to Saudi Arabia. So I would uh, wicken, um, I would... Say all the best for him. Ian McGuinness says sell or keep. Well, his contract's going to expire. We're not going to offer him a new contract. That's that's completely certain. I know that's not going to be. I know we're not going to be offering him a contract. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I had the choice, if of course with these injuries, that obviously plays a huge part into. I just think he's done now in terms of going to be being able to play consistently, going to be able to to get a run of games. I don't think that's ever going to be the case for him now. Um, so I do think it's the best idea to, to let him go. And it does look like Liverpool are going to be going down that route anyway. So um, yeah, interesting indeed with regards to that. Now let's move on to this man, Ruben Amarim. 
Uh, there has been another update, of course, and uh, the first one, of course, is being um, that uh, basically we will not be, um, well, Barcelona now will not be going in for Ruben Amarim. Now, yesterday there was a lot of news coming out of various sources. Again, I don't entertain stuff from, from crap sources. If there's someone, a reputable journalist or sort of something like that, um, it was being reported heavily across the sort of Liverpool space, or across the football space, that Ruben Ruben Amarim was a potential option for Barcelona, of course. There is a host of big clubs looking for a new manager this summer, and there is a lack of quality uh, managers or coaches at this moment in time within sort of global football. Um, so, obviously, you'd probably, you know, see Barca, Bayern, Liverpool kind of battling out for the same kind of candidates as we've seen with the Xabi Alonso one. Now reports did state that Barca were potentially interested in, in Ruben Amarim and that we would face competition to go on and get him. However, again, this comes from um, more reputable sources throughout per Portugal um, and a Portuguese footballing journalist, Pedro um, Sepp. Ulveda, again, sorry for pronunciation on this, uh, but he was the man that broke the news that Darwin Nunes was going to be coming to Liverpool, has stated that Barcelona are not in the race for Ruben Amarim and has stated that Liverpool, quote-unquote, are leading the race uh, for his signature and it should be a free hit at this moment in time for the Reds to land Ruben Amarim this summer as Air Jurgen Klopp's replacement. So um, that's positive news. I didn't really want to be battling with the likes of Barcelona just because, well, if you're from Portugal, you know, you probably grew up grew up watching your Portuguese league. But um, I just feel like South Americans and these kind of like Spanish, Portuguese will always look at La Liga as being the sort of top place, a Barcelona, a Real Madrid being the, the sort of pinnacle of a career. Um, so you, you, you slightly do get worried if a Barcelona was in the race for him. However, um, that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. Um, of course, that coming out of Portugal and from a reputable journalist uh, by the name, of course, of Pedro Sepp Oliveira, um, of course, who is the man who broke the Darwin Nunes to Liverpool news. So very, very reputable when it comes to sort of Portuguese football. Um, so yeah, we'll have a free hit with regards to him. But do I think um, there's going to be... Do I think um, there's obviously going to be some due diligence at this moment in time with regards to, to our board um, and we're probably going to be interviewing a couple of the candidates. But at this moment in time, it certainly looks like Ruben is the main man. It looks like Ruben is the sort of top candidate, especially with the report stating that De Zerbi was no longer in contention. So, yeah, again, the lack of sort of managers, he just fits the bill. He fits um, us as a football club genuinely. Um, and I don't really see us going in for anybody else, nor do I really see someone realistically going on to get the job. So, um, yeah, a positive update there with regards to Ruben Amarin, which is uh, very, very good to see. Um... Go well with the injury body. Thank you for the times you played for Liverpool, says Elida. Um, Elez says Saudi is the best place for him. Such a great player, but very injury prone. Good uh, luck to him. Uh, really don't care unless we play an attacking uh, football, says Joza. Again, I think a lot of people were just saying that with regards to Ruben. And I do think um, there's a lot of misconception with regards to him. A lot of people do think he's pragmatic, completely pragmatic, doesn't play on the sort of front foot, but he likes possession-based football. Um, yes, defence first, he likes to have a solid sort of back, but certainly there is a misconception that he just sits there and parks the bus, it's, it's absolutely not the case, um, and yeah, very likes to play out from the back, very, very much possession-based, just solid in defence, but going forward, there's a lot of, um, you know, attack minded you know whether it would be long balls or um, getting at the park by passing it um, he's also uh, similarities there with Jurgen Klopp in terms of the sort of Gagan press as well so I, I don't think there's misconceptions that he, he's going to turn up to Liverpool and just bring a bus with him that's not going to be the case um, and if you dive deep into him um, you'll, you'll really realise that soon enough and very quickly that actually he's not a pragmatic manager and you can't compare him to sort of the likes of Antonio Conte or Jose Mourinho that he gets these sort of comparisons to so um, yeah I would do a bit of uh, research on him um, we did a deep dive on our other channel, Penenka LFC, um, so do check it out. As I said, it's got around 200,000 views at this moment in time. So yeah, quite a big deep dive or a good deep dive into what Ruben Amorim would bring to Liverpool um, should, he, of course, he be appointed as the manager. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it with regards to the updates. Um, other sort of stuff with regards to the game tonight, Troops. Um, 
there is uh, a few players walking a tightrope in terms of suspensions that we have to be wary of. And that's that both an Endo um, and Darwin Nunes are at risk of Premier League suspensions. They need to avoid picking up two yellow cards in the next three games. If, of course, they do, then they will be suspended for a match. So, um, yeah, we don't want uh, those two to go into the book today. Um, with regards to some other news as well, uh, Virgil van Dijk has also come out and said that he's happy to give advice to a new manager who has to encourage to do things in your own way and what you think is important for the team. It's still weird we're planning for a future without Jürgen at this moment in time, as everybody keeps on saying. Uh, but Virgil van Dijk is, of course, happy to give advice to a manager and, of course, help them going forward into this sort of transitional period um, that's up and coming for this football club. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting. But we've still got a lot of time left until uh, Jürgen, well, we haven't really got a lot of time left until Jürgen Klopp goes, but um, it's, uh, it's one of them. Um, also, uh, Mo Salah has came out and named who he thinks Liverpool's two most underrated players are, but admits that he's not sure if fans would necessarily agree. Um, as one of the Reds' longest-serving players and a part of the leadership group, Salah is someone to listen to in the squad. Being a player of supreme talent, he holds influence over supporters and has now named two player he, players he thinks should be rated more highly amongst the supporters. Speaking in a television interview this week, the Egyptian was asked who he thinks in the current squad is underrated and maybe doesn't get enough praise from the fans. And he said, well, it's difficult to be fair. Um, Ali gets credit a lot, which is good. They deserve it. Don't get me wrong. Verge gets credit. But Tre uh, Trent and Robbo, they also get credit. He then added, he thinks two most underrated players are Darwin Nunes and Cody Gakpo, saying, I think Darwin and Cody. Cody doesn't get credit from the fans. I don't know if they agree with me. Um, Gakpo being named as uh, may come a surprise to supporters, given his recent run of in-app um, in performances. Um, however, Salah plays with the Dutch international in training and will more regularly see the talent he sort of possesses. Um, it's easy to forget how widely praised he was during the first few months at the club, in which he looked like Roberto Firmino's replacement as that sort of false nine. Uh, this season, though, he has frustrated at times, but actually has a decent record with 13 goals and five assists. Many people probably didn't um, state that with him. Um, an attribute supporters would like to see him add to his game is the intensity and key moments of the match. This is something the other man named by Salah Nunes doesn't lack. Um, and to be fair, I think Nunes does get a lot of praise from our supporters. I think he's a fan favourite, actually. I genuinely do. I think um, the fans and supporters um, really love Darwin Nunes and always want him to do really well. So I wouldn't necessarily agree there with Mo Salah that he doesn't get the credit he deserves. I think... Um, he does, especially this season. I think I've done a lot of videos kind of speaking and, and, um, and bringing up Darwin Nunes as a, how impactful he's been this season. So I don't necessarily agree there with Mo Salah that he doesn't get the credit he deserves from the players. Uh, sorry, from the fans. Um, I think the fans do see him as a, a fan's favourite. Um, and everyone, everyone I speak to as a Liverpool fan absolutely loves him and, and wants him to do well. So I wouldn't necessarily um, do that one with him. Um, especially Nunes isn't getting enough credit. Um, any more news regarding Salah, Alisson, Virgil van Dijk contract situation? No, not at this time. Um, again, that will probably take place over the summer, I hope. Um, especially with regards to yeah those three that you mentioned in terms of player contracts. You've got to allow the director of football to come in. You've also got to allow the new manager to come in. And I do believe the manager will keep all three of those players and will want to keep the players. Um, but yeah, certainly one of those uh, ones to just watch upon. Um, but you know what, troops? Uh, in terms of content, uh, that's kind of all we've already got today. So unless anyone wants to sort of direct the conversation elsewhere... Um, let me know your thoughts on everything down there in the comment section below. Of course, it is match day, the big game for Liverpool, big game for the Reds. And here's hoping we'll be back on top come the end of that one today. And then we can look forward to and start talking about that Manchester United game that's on the uh, on the horizon. Another massive game for Liverpool, um, a game... That uh, we need to win and hopefully get one and back over Manchester United after they took points of us, or take points of us after knocking us out of the FA Cup in the last match we played against them. So uh, it's more important this one. It's personal, but first up for us guys is Sheffield United, and we'll have to deal with them asap. Uh, but guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and as always, let me know your score predictions uh, for tonight's game. 